Where does the darkness sit in column then when you kind of walk into that world? I, I mean, I try to allow the worst in me to, to bubble up and the most damaged and the most um, insecure and fragile things to, to come up and say, well, I mean, Louis Spritzer, uh, a teacher I had years ago at NTS, he, he was very, he was the voice teacher, but, but strictly speaking, we were always talking about acting. Every class was an acting class. And he said, you, you don't worry if a thought comes and it's dark, it frightens you. Entertain it and allow it to go. Know that it will go. It may come back, but, but don't be afraid. Let it come in. And, and indeed, if, if memory serves, you and I did work like that together when you were at theater school low as many years ago, just talking about allowing these things to happen and knowing that your responsibility as an artist is to, to be brave enough to see what happens when those happen and then try and figure out if you can live with those people when you go home. That is a different story. Okay, to try to live, do you live with them? What, how much do you, what do you take home? How do you live with it? And what happens if it never goes away? What happens if you get dark? I mean, this is, the discussion partly, Colin, is for you know, those kids who are doing theater think, well, what happens? I have all these dark feelings, so where do I go when I've I I've had to develop hobbies. And you know, I have a very loving and uh, sufficiently needy family. And by needy, I mean you know, they need somebody to do the cooking and the groceries. That's my obligation in the family. And so I have responsibilities that I can't shirk no matter what I'm doing. And that gives me great focus because usually they're very active uh, and engaged and less emotionally and intellectually engaged. You know, you're chopping carrots and peppers and steaks and cooking and grilling and trying not to cut or burn yourself. And so that, I found, is a very useful, uh, you know, uh, valve to release some of that pressure. But because it's the theater and not film, I always think I could be better. You know, if you say cut, we go home, print, I know it's done. There's nothing more I can do except maybe polish it in the ADR stages and hope they edit the bad stuff. On stage, a discovery tonight would be an advantage for tomorrow. And so one is always taking notes. One is always trying to be better. I, I, I'm never really happy with a thing. I'm happy with the journey and the adventure, but I know we're never going to get it completely right, which means that you're going to live with it. Mostly, I see it reflected in the eyes of my family, and particularly my wife, who is a very, very fine Donna. director. Uh, and so in her capacity as a director, she understands actors, and she, she understands me uh, very well. And obviously, you know, we've lived together a long time. Um, and I enjoy very much being directed by her because she sort, short circuits all those things that I think I'm good at and that I, I offer the, my first, you know, <laughs> volley across the bow is pretty polished and ex, you know, <laughs> redolent of all my experience and cunning and usually rubbish, right? Yes. Rubbish. Why are you singing it? Not entirely, not entirely. Come on, Carl. No, Come but on. you know, there's nothing... She... she uh, listen, th th to give you an idea <laughs> of how effective she can be, when Cimbalino is directing me, and I enjoy being directed by him immensely, third or fourth week in rehearsal, he'll just call her and say, what do I say to him now? <laughs> and she'll say, what's he doing? He'll describe, and she'll say, no problem, just do this. And, and it always works, because you know, it, it's, it's an intimate relationship we have, and she knows how I try to protect myself. I, you know, I get into trouble. What are you protecting yourself from? From the experience, and from going too far. Lear was perhaps the most interesting. I mean, I've always tried to be I mean, good. Protecting I, yourself from the darkness or the despair or the out of controlness or? Mm -hmm. All of the above. Because in order, to, in order to discover it, you have to entertain the possibility that it's there. You know, maybe I am a bad guy. Maybe I am mad. Maybe I am petty, vindictive, and a hateful human being. Okay, maybe I am. And all of those pieces of me that are those things come up to say, I will support that. I'll help you act that. I'll help you do this. And particularly in, 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 in plays where I have had, you know, where I've committed to being completely engaged and try to be the best I can. I, I, I made a deal with myself at, at various watershed moments in my career that if I didn't do the part or the play to the standard that I expected of myself, I would stop acting. 
and particularly 33 was Hamlet, 55 was Lear. And those two moments are, are anchor moments for me of, okay, where are you? Are you going to really do it, or are you just going to bullshit it? Because if you're going to bullshit it, you should stop. But if you're going to really do it, it's a situation costing no less than everything. Are you prepared to do that? And, you know, I'm still here and I'm still doing it. So I have, <laughs> I have judged myself to be still engaged in doing it. But What's I, your watershed between are you going to do it technically, fake it, or are you going to really do it? What's, what, what is the journey of that I think watershed? you need to understand what's required. I mean, I, I think that in order to be able to achieve anything in this, you need a technical mastery. You need to be, you need to have all of that skill, physical, emotional, mental, verbal, vocal, at your fingers' ends, ad dung hill, as they say. Otherwise, there's not a hope in hell you have of getting it across the footlights. Having said that, one of the things that I've, you know, I think that one of the brilliant things about being a Canadian actor is that we have inherited the very best of the English tradition. You know, their parliament, their theater, how to do it. But we're so close to America. We're not at all afraid of reaching out and saying, hey, that method thing you do, that, you know, that truth and honesty and, you know, raw emotional stuff. How do you do that? Because if we can marry that, to a technical mastery. It seems to me we have the best of both worlds. And I think as Canadian actors, we tend to, I certainly see the world like that, the acting world like that. And so the latest experiment I ran on this was Lear. And it, it damn near killed me. And I found it, you know, and it's, it's a third of the length of Hamlet. It's not a big part, per se. You mean marrying the emotional honesty and yeah. reality to the technique yeah. The, in the enviable technique of the British technique? Yeah, Those two because to be able to speak it clearly enough so that everybody in the audience all the way around you, and it was at the festival theater, so there's, you know, there's a big house and they're everywhere. You know, it's, it's not easy to do. I'm not going to pretend that it doesn't require a certain amount of technical skill to know how it's landing, if it's landing, when to wake them up, when not to wake them up, and how to pursue your agenda. At the same time, I wanted to know that I was truly bringing everything that we'd worked on for the year and a half that we prepared to do it, for the months and months that we rehearsed it, that I was still prepared to honestly show up and say, you know what? I really don't know what's going to happen today. And I don't care. I'm here and I'm going to start the play. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say, give me the map. And I'm going to go from there. 